get a lot of email and comments on our videos we produce here at Muscle Car of the Week, and we really like to hear people's thoughts and, and uh, commentary on these things. And every once in a while, we like to take a couple of minutes to maybe answer one of the questions or clarify something that somebody has seen in a video. So today, we're going to take a couple of minutes to uh, answer some of the viewer mail questions we get on Muscle Car of the Week. And the first one is a uh, question we get fairly often, and it is... Um, why is it that I am never the guy driving the cars that you see in the Muscle Car of the Week videos? And the answer to that is pretty simple. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, in reality, some of these cars cost more than you know, what I'll make in an entire lifetime. So when we shoot these cars, uh, we have a very rigid production schedule. We need to get a lot of them done in a fairly short period of time. And the Brothers Collection has a couple of very talented gentlemen who kind of manage the cars. So we let them do all the driving and moving around. Um, the only time I ever touch them is maybe to open the hood or to open the door. Sometimes I get in one. Uh, but I'm really there to respect the cars and make sure nothing happens to it. Uh, I did drive one for the first time recently. It was the 289K code uh, non-GT Mustang that I moved from one parking spot to another. But you're not going to see me burning the tires on these things. Uh, just because if something bad happened, you know, I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize this relationship that we have with the brothers. We appreciate them letting us do this as it is. So that's the reason why I don't drive them, but um, we do try to incorporate a driving shot and a burnout whenever we can. Uh, the next question comes from a gentleman named Rico Law. This came through YouTube, and he says, uh, on Muscle Car of the Week episode number 78, he noticed a couple of stickers on the fog lights on the EB5 Blue AAR Cuda. And Mr. Law, you have a very good eye, because what those are are warning stickers that came on those lights when that car was new. These could be the original fog light stickers. They might be reproductions. I'm not quite sure on this particular car, but it is kind of a neat little detail that was left on this one showing, you know, what this car looked like basically from day one. Our next comment comes from a gentleman named Jeff House, who was uh, commenting on episode number 107, in which we featured the orange 1970 Shelby Mustang and he said it looks like the car next to the Shelby is a Corvair and are we gonna do a piece on the Corvair well that's a good eye it is a Corvair um, I don't really call it a muscle car it's not one of the Yanko Stinger Corvairs or anything that's real high performance just one of the oddballs that ended up in the brothers collection so we're not gonna do a full video on it but we will acknowledge that it is kind of a neat car this next question comes from uh, several viewers who had a really sharp eye. Uh, we recently published a video on the K-Code non-GT uh, 289 powered Mustang, and we reference the power brakes on that car as being a unique option. And at two parts of the video, the cap of the brake master cylinder changes in appearance. It goes from chrome to argent silver and back to chrome. And uh, basically what ended up happening is it's supposed to be argent silver. This car has a chrome one on it. Uh, we shot video of it with the chrome cap installed, and then it got switched, and we shot more video of it later. And the sequence of the edited piece, it changes from one to the other. So you caught kind of a rare continuity error in our show. But sharp eye, and, and we appreciate that kind of stuff. It's fun. Next up, uh, Mr. Chris Torres posted a comment, and he said, uh, thanks to the production crew for me and my six-year-old son, because we enjoy watching these videos. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, people see me on camera, and they see the cars, but they don't see the team behind the scenes that do such a great job of shooting these and editing them and making, uh, making me look as good as the cars. So uh, it is a very talented team, and we do what we can to make the cars look great. And thank you for the compliment. We did a feature on the Pantera, it's a 1974 Pantera that only had 700 and some odd miles on it. We had a little slip up, we called it a Pantera GTS, it's not, it's a regular Pantera. The GTS had bigger fender flares and was a little racier looking, so we apologize for that slip up. And somebody pointed out that we didn't show the engine, and the reason why we didn't show the engine in that one is on the Pantera, the engine is underneath a big cover which mounts below that rear deck. And this car is so new and so fresh, quite honestly, I didn't want to bother taking that cover off to show the engine, because I really didn't want to disturb it. You know, with only 700 and some miles, who knows how many times that thing's ever been off. So that time, we did it to kind of keep the car happy, um, but we apologize for not showing the engine. We might end up doing a piece on a Pantera GTS, though, and if we do, we'll show the engine. 
Uh, next was another screw up that we did on a uh, 1970 Dodge Charger with a 426 Hemi. We accidentally misread the horsepower and torque. It's uh, 490 foot pounds of torque, not 425 like we said in the video. Uh, again, we always appreciate people that keep us on track because the details matter on these cars. Here's another comment we get often and people look at these videos and assume that the car might be for sale. Well, all the cars that we show on Muscle Car of the Week are privately owned in the Brothers Collection, and these are not for sale videos. Um, these videos are here to document the car, uh, so if you see something and you like it, that's as far as it goes. Uh, we're not trying to sell cars. It's not a dealership. It's not an auction or a consignment company. It's a private collection, and someday uh, there might be a museum where you might be able to go see these things in person, but right now the best way to share them is through Muscle Car of the Week videos. And if you have friends that like this stuff, uh, we welcome you to email them and let them know about our channel uh, because we think there's a lot of Muscle Car fans out there and uh, they'd like to see this stuff. On episode 112, we showed you a 1969 Camaro SS 396 car. And there was a lot of chatter about this one for two reasons. Uh, one, this car had the RPO option ZL2 uh, ducted hood, which is commonly known as a cowl induction hood, and somebody pointed out that that's not part of the SS 396 package. It should have had the flatter hood with the square ice cube tray scoops, as we like to call them. But in this case, this car was ordered with that hood as an option, which you could get um, on virtually any Camaro in 69. It didn't have to be only a Z28. You could get it on an SS. And uh, we know this by doing some research and talking with Camaro owners. There's some really great Camaro websites, the Camaro Research Group, Camaros.net, where they have all of the breakouts of what was available when these cars were new. Also, people commented that the engine, while it was clean and perfectly restored, it almost looked sloppy the way some of the overspray was done on the front of the engine and the orange paint and things like that. And there's some debate um, about what these cars actually looked like. And when Chevrolet built these cars on the assembly line, they didn't pay attention to every detail and they had some overspray and the chalk marks and the paint daubs and the colors and stuff like that. And today the restorer's dilemma is do you recreate kind of the original errors or do you correct them and make it look nice? Um, this one, some people suggest, might have been overly restored in favor of the errors and other people say, well, how could you do that and not make it look nice? Well, it's all what the restorer wanted to do, uh, and it's a great topic of debate, and we welcome your feedback on this beautiful 1969 Camaro. And finally, we're going to do a little preview of the 2015 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals show located uh, in the Chicago area at Rosemont, Illinois at the Donald Stevens Center. This is uh, a place where you can see some of the cars in person that we have featured here on Muscle Car of the Week. We will also be shooting video there uh, to give you more coverage of that event. But this year's pretty unique. Um, um, every year is unique at that show. But this year, the Brothers Collection is actually sponsoring a display at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. And it is a 1970 and 1971 uh, Chrysler Plymouth e-body display featuring, if you can believe it, right now, 26 uh, Hemi Cuda and Challenger convertibles on display under one roof. It could be the largest gathering of these ultra rare, ultra high dollar muscle cars anywhere. And it's being brought to you by the Brothers Collection at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. And they have theme displays for all different makes and models. Of course, they have Corvette stuff. Um, they've got Ford displays. There's a very unique Chevrolet display this year, uh, spotlighting the 1965 Z16 396 Malibu SS car. They're going to have a whole pile of those on display. And these are cars that you don't see um, at your regular car show. You have to go to an event like the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals to see them. So we recommend you go check out their website at mcacn.com and you can learn more information about how to get there and uh, what's going to be on display. We'll be there and we will look for you at the show. In the meantime, feel free to send us any emails. Uh, you can reach us at mail at musclecaroftheweek.com. You can also leave comments on our YouTube page or go to musclecaroftheweek.com and join our forum where we have conversations about a lot of these cars. So until next week, see you next time.